this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make the Rusty Road crop top. You can get this pattern for free on my blog and also on Ribbler which is a new interactive digital platform. I will be doing a live crochet along on Ribbler on April 25th. So the crochet along will be right inside the pattern. So if you're interested in that be sure to join me. You can ask me questions about the pattern. I will be live April 25th. The yarn that I've used to make this top is Stroll Fingering Weight. This yarn was provided by We Crochet and there'll be a link in the description box on where you can purchase it. I've used Pumpkin for this top, but they have lots of great color options. You'll need three balls to complete the medium sized top. Now it's quite an oversized fit. So the medium top is 48 inches finished. I'm about a 36 inch bust, so there's about a 12 inch amount of ease uh, on the pictures that I've modeled this top. And so I've used three balls and I have, still I have this much left. So it's really affordable to make because you only need a few balls. You will need two hooks to complete the pattern. So the majority of the pattern, the lace stitch is worked in a 3.5 millimeter E hook. Now at the very end we're going to finish after we've blocked the piece we're going to go around it with a G plus so a 4.5 millimeter. So you'll need those two hooks to complete this top. And these hooks that I've used are Odyssey hooks from Furls Crochet and there'll also be links for them in the description. So that it's a bit easier to see, I'm going to show this here for you in cork just to get started. So you start out with a chain and the chain is going to be the length of the front and the back. Because this design we make two large rectangles. We're going to seam the front, seam the back, leaving a nice neck opening and then leaving um, arm openings and seaming the sides. So when we're chaining, we're working the front and the back. Now you can lengthen this chain if you would like your crop top to be a little bit longer, maybe you don't want it a crop length, then just increase accordingly. So let's begin with that chain and I'm gonna chain 163. I'm chaining a multiple of three plus one. So if you're changing up your chain, you want to have that in multiples of three plus one. So chain up 163. So you'll have a nice long chain like this, but for the tutorial, so we can work it up a little bit quicker, I'm just showing you on a small swatch. So I've chained 19. Now what we're going to do so that our edge is really nice. Another possibility is doing the foundation single crochet, but I'm just gonna turn and work into those back humps, the back leg of the chain. So there is the first one right here. I'm gonna work a single crochet. So in every back leg here. I'm going to work that right across. Okay, so you're going to have 18 stitches. For my swatch, I'm going to have 18 stitches, you will have 162. Okay, so I've worked that across. Now we're going to do our setup row. So I'm going to chain three. Okay, we're turning our work. So let's take a look here. Here is the first stitch that works sort of aligns with our chain three, which is included here as a stitch. We're going to skip the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, we're going to work a double crochet. And a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain two. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches 
And in the next stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet. And a single crochet. Okay, so the start of my repeat is going to be chain two, skip two stitches, and in the next, a double crochet and a single crochet. Okay, and I'm going to repeat that along my work. So I'm working now to the last repeat, so you should be ending with your three stitches, chain two, and in the very last stitch, we're going to add a double crochet and a single crochet. Now I'll chain three, whoops, chain three, and turn. Okay, so now this is going to be the, the row. We're just going to repeat throughout the pattern. So it's super easy. It works up fairly quickly, even though we're working with a fingering weight. We're skipping the single crochet. In the double crochet of our previous row, we're going to work a double crochet and a single crochet. Chain two. We're skipping well, we're skipping over the chain two, we're skipping the single crochet, and then into the double of the previous row, we work a double, and a single, chain two. Skipping over the chain two, skipping over the single, and a double in the double, and a single in the double. Okay, and now you can just repeat that across. And I'm coming up to the end, and I'm ending with a double and a single in the final double stitch. Okay, and then chain three and turn. And we're doing the exact same thing. So we're just repeating the last row until we get our desired width. So let me just go through that one more time. So we're skipping the single and in the double, work a double crochet and a single crochet, chain two. Skipping over to the double of the previous row working a double and a single chain two and just repeat that and you end in the final double stitch okay so now what you want to do is work until you have 27 total of the pattern stitch rows so if we include that first single crochet we have 28 if you count just your stitch pattern rows, you're gonna have 27. Now, this is not blocked. So let's take a measure of it unblocked. So I have nine and a half inches. So basically the total circumference of your top is going to be multiplying whatever this is by four. I would multiply 9.5 times four and I would get a 38 inch circumference. But I wanna block this out and really stretch out these stitches. So mine's gonna end up being larger than that when I'm finished. But I will complete this before I do any blocking. So to finish it off, I've already chained one. I'm going to work a single crochet in that first single crochet stitch. I'm going to work a single crochet in the double. And then I'm going to work a single crochet in the chain two space. I'm going to work a single crochet in the single and then a single crochet in the double 
and in the chain two space. Okay, and you're gonna work that all the way across. When you end, you're gonna end in the turning chain and you should have 162 single crochets, 162 in total, okay? So now remember, this is front and back and you're making two panels. So I've made one, I need to make a second panel, then we're gonna get them blocked out so that we can really stretch out the stitch pattern. I am gonna wet my pieces, I'm just gonna put them into a nice lukewarm bath, wet them out, and then I'm gonna stretch them out. And I'm gonna pop up those dimensions for you so you can see, once it's blocked, what the dimensions are gonna be. So right now, without any blocking, I'm about nine and a half wide, and my length is about 35, 35 to 35 and a half. So like I say, if you need this to be longer, you can just increase that starting chain to get a longer top. Okay, so I finished blocking my pieces. So I allowed them to fully dry, I've removed all the pins, and my panels are now 12 inches wide by 41 inches long. Okay, so you can see how nice and stretched out our stitches now. It's really nice and open, which is perfect and light for spring and summer. Now what I wanna do is finish off the edge I really want to go over it, just if there's been some pulling from blocking. It's just gonna clean up our edge all the way around. So I'm gonna go up a full hook size. So I'm going up to the G plus a 4.5 millimeter because everything's stretched out now, so I wanna use a larger hook. So let's just join in here. We'll chain one and work a single crochet and we're just working single crochets all the way along our edge. So we're just working in these established stitches. So really easy. Now we're also gonna finish these ends as well. So once I get all the way down, I will meet you up at the corner and show you how to do the corner and work across. So now when you're working these edges, you wanna make sure your work's not pulling in. If you're struggling to keep those stitches fairly loose and it's it's not hanging right, you may wanna go up a hook size. So just kinda of make sure that it's not pulling. I'm also gonna use a steamer at the end to steam my edges. So now once you get to the corner, you're gonna add three single crochet into the corner. And that's just gonna give it a nice 90 degree turn. And now what we're gonna do is we need to work across a total of 54 stitches. So you wanna count as you go. Now what I found is that sort of our bigger chain space, I'm adding two, and then the smaller spaces, I'm adding one. So one, two, and then in the bigger space, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there, I've done eight stitches and you just wanna keep track as you go along to make sure, and also again, that it's not pulling too much or you wanna go up a bigger hook size or try and keep those stitches loose. And when you get to the end, make sure you add your three in this corner, just slip stitch to join, and then you can fasten that off. And next, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other panel. So just complete both the panels with the nice edging all the way around. And then the next step, I'll be showing you how to seam this up.
to finish it so off. So the next step you want to do is mark your neck opening. So I used some stitch markers and I tried it on to see how I liked the fit. So I'm happy with about a 12 inch opening. So first step is to take your measuring tape and mark out 20 and a half inches because my total panel length is 41. So half of that was 20 and a half. So I marked that and then I went back four inches to the back and I did eight inches to the front. So there'll only be a small V section at the back. And of course we're gonna have more of a drop sort of V neckline here. So I didn't count my stitches or anything. I just measured it out because once we start joining, this is basically just an estimate. The exact stitches don't matter. It's just gonna take extra time. As we start to join it, we'll, it'll make sure that each side is even. So I've just marked them out. So your first step would be to mark out your center, which is probably about here. And then I did this off camera. So then I measured out four inches and then I measured out eight and put a marker. Okay, so now to seam the front piece, we're gonna seam right up to the stitch marker. What I'm gonna do, so right now I have the right sides facing. I'm going to put my right sides together. Then what I'm gonna do is come down and our, we did the three single crochets in the corner. You wanna grab the single crochet that's in the center and we're just going through the back loops. I'm gonna pull through a bunch of yarn. Now, the first one here, I'm gonna give it a knot. Probably taking a little bit more yarn than I need. But I don't wanna run out. So now to do the whip stitch, we're gonna go through the back loops of each of the stitches. I've just sandwiched my stitches together and you're going through each stitch and I'm just going through the back loop. And this is why I didn't count because we're going through each stitch so as soon as we get up to the marker, the marker is really just an estimate of where we wanna stop seaming. So we know we're gonna have even stitches on each side because we're starting from the bottom. And when we do the back, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up to the marker. So this is all you need to do. So I have a little bit to go here before I get to the marker. So I'm just gonna continue working this off camera. Okay, so I've come up to the stitch marker. Just gonna grab one more stitch there. Take that out. You're going to want to finish this off with a knot as well. And then we'll weave these ends in after. So I had lots of yarn still left. So I'm just going to trim it. Okay. So now we're just going to go to the other end and do the same thing. So again, you're gonna to wanna to find that, just gonna give it a little pull, your three single crochets and you want that center one. 
and then we're just going to seam all the way up to this marker. So when you've got them sandwiched here together, we're taking, we want those two loops that are touching in the center to go down. So we're taking this one that's closest and then this one that's farthest. And those are the loops you're going through. You want to make sure that you're always grabbing the same ones. And when this is sandwiched together, those are the ones that are going to pop out. So it's easy to see them. Okay, so I've worked all the way up. Now we can just take a look at what it looks like on the right side. So if you've grabbed the correct loops, you should have these nice looped edges on this side. So this is what it's going to look like. It looks really nice. And now we have the nice big neck opening here. And next, what we need to do is do some seaming on our sides. So again, we want right sides facing. And we'll be seaming up the sides and leaving an arm opening. So I'm going to go with a nine inch arm opening. So I'm just going to line up the bottom side and then I'm going to measure it out. Okay, so I measured that and I'm just going to stick my markers in here. Okay, so I have nine inches. Get rid of that tail and I'm going to weave in that other tail that I have here as well. And then I'm going to just seam this the exact same way I did the front. So I've joined on. I want to get these sandwiched together so I can find the right loops to go through. And you're just going to do this all the way again up to the marker and then we're going to repeat on the other side. So I am going to work both of my sides up now off camera. I'm going to get all of my ends. I'm going to weave all the ends in. And then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so here is the finished top. I just added a little personalized label. And that also just reminds me what is the front. And this is what it's looking like. It's so nice and cozy and light to wear. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and tap that bell to stay updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.